What I'm going to be going over today is a basic setup for testing a 36 minus 1 trigger wheel setup uh, using the gem stem on a Mega Squirt 2. Uh, but we're also going to uh, test a couple of the uh, extra um, outputs and things like that that I've got set up on this, uh, this specific box. Um, what I've got here is a standard, um, standard idle sequence. Uh, going through the uh, going through the stimulator, you can see over here on the computer um, what our settings are. We've got uh, you know wideband at about 14.6 um, uh, RPM just at idle. Uh, load, of course, since we're not connected to vacuum, is going to be right around 100. Uh, we've got a pretty average uh, coolant and, uh, in my case, oil temp and um, air temp. And, you know, our timing is reacting basically um, based on the rest of the settings. So I'm going to take a closer look now at the, uh, at the setup of the gym stem to show how I'm testing this on a 36-1 uh, trigger setup. Take a close look at some of these settings. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is the actual um, trigger setup. Uh, this is a version 2.03 gem stem, so uh, the 2.0 plus settings will work on this. The first thing we've got are the dip switches that change your uh, trigger wheel settings. Uh, we have number three flipped up, which is the uh, standard 36-1 uh, trigger wheel setup. Now this is based on a Ford EDIS system, which we're just using um, direct coil control instead of the EDIS box. So we are using a VR sensor, which is what comes with the EDIS setup. Um, and you can see the jumper here is set up for EDIS, um, which are the, uh, from our uh, viewpoint here, the two pins on the right, you jump for, um, excuse me, a VR sensor, not EDIS. Um, if you were using a Hall sensor, you would connect the two right pins. Um, so for VR sensor, we've got the two left pins connected here. Also for a VR sensor uh, in this specific setup, we've got to send 12 volts to the, uh, to the setup. So what we've got here is you can see the pull up and 12 volt. Uh, we've got jumped on both rows of pins. So you've got to jump the 12 volt on both sides in order for this to work. At that point, your um, TAC signal should read correctly in uh, Tuner Studio. If you have the dip switch on three up, you have your VR connection uh, set for the tack, and you've got your 12 volt pull up uh, connected properly. The other thing we've got here, it's pretty basic. We've got a wideband O2 set up, which we just have this jumper here for the O2 jumped. If you take this jumper off, it goes to a narrow band one volt. You jump it, it reads five volts, which is what we are set up for. Um, over here, we'll just talk about some of the lights that we've got going, uh, on the standard lights here. Uh, the first thing we've got, these, this is the standard row of lights. You have your fuel pump, uh, your first and second bank injectors, and your um, fast idle. This is the standard um, light configuration you should be seeing. Uh, down here below us, we've got some more lights flickering. Uh, I've got my standard ignition jumped over here from the pin marked ignition to the first light so that is ignition number one ignition number two uh, based on my setup is actually uh, jumped to uh, SPR4 so the second jumper here is also jumped down here to SPR4 uh, which is my second ignition coil um, some of these other jumpers uh, which we're going to be testing as well um, one of these lights is hooked up to SPR3, which is actually my shift light, which is programmed as one of the, uh, one of the outputs, one of the optional outputs for Mega Squirt. Also on SPR1, I've got my launch control switch, which is also connected here. You can see that's my, I'll give you a better shot of that later. Um, it's actually tapped into uh, SPR1 here so we can send a signal. So that signal goes up into my switch which is here, and this is just for testing of course, and then I'm grounding that switch here on the ground section. Um, the launch control switch I have set up does require a ground uh, to activate, so that is what we are mimicking here. And the last connection we have uh, on the jumpers 
is we've got the uh, an external fan control set up on IAC1. So you can see IAC1A here is connected to a fan control for the LEDs. It's a slightly better view of the, uh, the switch uh, that I've got set up for the uh, launch control. And as you can see, the trigger light does function, but we are not getting a launch control signal showing up here where my trigger light is in Tuner Studio because we're not meeting all of the criteria, but this shows that we are making a connection whenever we push the button. Now another thing down here is with the, let me turn the, the RPM down a bit. You can see the alternating pulses from the uh, injectors and the uh, ignition. So that tells you that you do have alternating pulses, which you should have for two banks. Uh, this is set up for a four-cylinder, uh, essentially with two banks to fire and two banks uh, to spray fuel. And it looks like it's working properly. Okay, the first thing that we're going to test, uh, whenever we've got everything hooked up, we've got our jumpers set up, is that we are getting a correct RPM signal. So let's just check. RPM is stable. It's adjusting as expected. We can go ahead and make sure our uh, wideband is responding as well. Uh, it's a horrible gauge set up, but it is working. Um, TPS also, let's check that. TPS is working. Okay, now that we've got that verified, we can check uh, some of our other things. Uh, the one light that we have here for a uh, that we're testing is our optional output for uh, coolant temp. Right now I've got the uh, oil temp set up. You can see the gauge there. And the light comes on after 200 degrees, I believe. So we're just going to come over here, roll up the temp a little bit, and we should have a light come on. There it is. It says our coolant fan is active. Roll it back down. And you can check your hysteresis values and everything. Um, while you're doing this. Uh, the next thing we need to check is our rev limit. We're going to go ahead and roll up the uh, gonna roll up the RPM. And the first thing that's going to come on is you're going to see the shift light come on. It is coming on at the correct 6800 RPM. And if you keep going past that, you're going to get fuel cut because we are set up to cut fuel as a hard limit. You can see the injectors cutting off there. Let's roll it back down. That is working. Go back to an idle state. Uh, next up, we can check our shift parameters, our flat shift and everything. Uh, our parameters for flat shift is we want to have the TPS above 95%, so we're just going to roll it up pretty far here. And for launch control, we have to be above 4,000 RPM. So above 4,000 RPM, we're going to hit our switch. See our launch control light turn on there. See we're in launch control. Our ignition is retarding correctly. we got a spark cut um, indicator there on the dash. And check the same thing over here. Let's push the light. You see the, uh, you see the spark change where it's being cut. And you see our uh, trigger indicator for the switch activating properly. The next thing we can check is flat shift, which is going to be a little over 6,000 RPM should trigger that. Just check everything here. Yep, we've got flat shift. We've got ignition retard. We've got indicators down on the bottom. And we've got our lights over here also indicating properly. That flat shift is active. Okay, so that is checked out. And um, looks to be about it. That's the basics for testing all of your outputs uh, in Megasquirt and on the Gemstone.